Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be showing you how I trim my own hair at home. I've been in charge of my haircut since 2007 and I've tested and tried many different methods on how to trim my own hair at home. These are the hair scissors that I'm using. It's not any specific brand, it's just a pair of scissors that I saw in my local hair shop. So I'm starting off with washed and blow dried hair. You can check out my previous videos on how I did that. I'll leave the link for those in my description box below. You can do this on straightened hair as well, which I went ahead and did as well because I need to cut off a little bit more. The first thing I'm going to do is make a parting from ear to ear. So you measure from the top of each ear, so ear to ear from the top of the ears. And then I just take my paddle brush and I brush my hair out. So here I'm just feeling with my hands because obviously I can't see at the back of my head. So yeah, you just part your hair down in the middle. I'm taking the left side here and I'm just combing it out, checking how much I'm going to be trimming. So I comb that through and I pull it down using the comb and my fingers all the way down to where I want to cut it and I cut across where my fingers are. I'm not going to cut layers into this part, it is literally just to gauge where my length will be. I curve my fingers round to get a better grip on my hair or you can overlap your fingers as well because that's what you need. You need a lot of tension from the comb and your fingers to get it as straight as possible especially if you are cutting it with blow dried hair you want to make sure that you've got a good grip. I do cut off a fair bit because I do need to take those ends off because if your hair is healthy it will grow long and if you don't cut off those split ends they're going to travel all the way up your hair. Then you would have to do a bigger haircut than you would want to. So yeah, I'm just doing the same thing on the other side, trimming off the same amount. And I will check this after I've done it just to see if the lengths are the same. And that is the back part done. A way to check if everything is even on both sides is to take random parts of hair on each side from the same part of the head and measure it down towards your chest. So yeah, I'm happy with that. You can see from the lines on my shirt that the sections are even. So yeah, as you can see, I am running the comb down my hair just to see if I can see any major uneven activity going on. You'll definitely see if there's any major unevenness. So now I'm moving on to the top part of my hair. And what I do here is I'm splitting my hair into two. I'm not gonna touch that back part. I'm just going to use it as a guide now. I'm going to work on one side at a time and I'm going to make another parting starting from the top of my head down towards my ears. So yeah, I'm just going to match the parting on the other side as well. You want to get this as accurate as possible. And once I've done that, I just twist them back up and I'm going to be working on that middle section to start with. So what I'm going to do now with the middle section, I'm going to comb it together with the back section and I'm going to cut off the length to match the back part of my hair. So when I'm cutting these sections, it's just three sections. So as you can see here, you can see where the lengths are different. That is the back section of my hair and that is the top part where we're going to be cutting. And as you can see, it looks like a lot. It really does and it does really pain me to cut that off this is why when I cut my layers I don't cut it too high because I just don't want to be cutting off that much hair so um, even though it's not my length but I find that the layers get a bit messy when you cut it too high so I do recommend instead of straight across like straight horizontal bring it down just a quarter of that a 45 degree angle from your body that's where I cut my layers so as you can see, using that tension and pulling my hair with the comb on my fingers down to where I want to cut it to match the back of my hair and you can see where the back part of your hair is because it will start to slip out of your finger if you pull too far. So I'll pull it down, use the tension on my fingers and just when I get to the end of where I want to cut it, I remove the comb and snip, snip, snip. 
I like to hold my fingers a bit further back from where the cut is so that I can trim in front. That way I can see it better. So I've done one section and, and I'll be doing exactly the same thing with each section. When I first started cutting my own hair, I did use to cut those really high layers like you see in the hairdressers. You know, where they take it all the way up at the top and cut. But I just found that my hair didn't look as good when I used to do it like that. And that's when I would make the most mistakes. So I just focus on doing the 45 degree angle. There's not that much layers doing it this way, but it's still not a blunt, blunt cut. I can't stand having a blunt cut on my hair because it just makes my wash and goes look so out of shape. <laughs> it looks okay when it's straight, but when it goes back to being curly, it just looks weird. And that's what I hated about my wash and goes before because it would be an odd shape. But when I started cutting my hair like this, I started to really, really like my wash and goes. Because with my hair, the coils are tighter at the back than it is at the front. So it does bunch up a lot more at the back than it does at the front. So with keeping all of my length, I don't have to like do any sort of stretching to even out my hair. Whereas before I used to have to try and stretch it with the hair dryer. So yeah, when I cut these layers, it just gives my hair like a nice rounded shape. It gets a little bit trickier when you're doing the back section, but you're really, really going to have to stretch your arms and get some flexibility in your arms to reach and stretch and get that tension at the back of your hair because as you can see I twist my head all the way around to try and just pull my hair as far as I can <laughs> but yeah, obviously if your hair is shorter it's easier and it did used to be a lot easier to cut my hair when it was shorter yeah with this length it's a lot it's it's a lot of stretching <laughs> So yeah, I'm just stretching it as far as it can go with the comb and using the tension with my fingers to pull it as far as it can go. I'll meet it up with that back guideline and I'll just trim straight up. I won't trim from the bottom because that's the length. You don't want to cut that at all. So you want to cut using a straight line going upwards to cut into the section on top. I mean, I have definitely, 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 definitely struggled to find a routine that worked for me. I've watched lots and lots of different tutorials to try and get layers in my hair without going to the hairdressers. And I was just fed up with cutting my hair wrong. So I just simplified the way I used to do it and it turns out this is the best way. These are the best haircuts I've ever done on my hair. So yeah, I've been cutting my hair this way for a while now, but over the years I've adapted it to make it easier because before I used to really go into a lot of sections and I used to make a lot more mistakes doing it that way. I used to have one side much shorter than the other. I found that with using less sections, it made it less likely for me to make more mistakes. Right, so here's a good example from where you can see the hair that you're not going to cut and the hair that you're supposed to be cutting from the top. So if you comb it out, pull it out straight down, 45 degree angle, you'll see where the hair is that you need to cut. And for me, it's all of that. I won't start cutting from the very bottom. I will leave that bottom piece and just trim off that very top piece there. And then I'll comb it back out again, see if I've done it correctly, cut off some more. As you can see that little bit got missed, so I'm going to cut that again. And I'll say I'll go over each section about three times before I'm happy with the overall cut of the section. So once I'm done cutting those three sections, I go ahead and bring all the hair together so that I can measure up and see if I've made any mistakes or to see if I need to cut a little bit more. And I'm just going to cut off any hair that looks out of place. I think what scares us the most when we are trimming our own hair is that we're cutting off our length, right? And so with the way I cut my hair, I don't touch the back of my hair at all. So that will be my length retained. Right, so as you can see there, I've taken all the hair and those straggly ends at the top is what you want off. Once I feel like I'm satisfied with that section, I go ahead and pin it up. 
and do exactly the same thing on the next side. And then I take both sections down and comb them out and then I do a check to see if everything is the same length on both sides. So this is when I'll do the random strands of hair on each section just to see if they're the same length on each side and it does and I'm happy <laughs> as you can see. And now I'm going to be doing the front layers. So I'm going to take out one side and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do the straight cut at the bottom again. So I'm going to be using that back section as a guideline for the front section of my hair. So I've messed up so many times doing the sides of my hair because I've just cut way too much length off. Yeah, so I don't really mess around too much with the sides and the front of my hair. And I'm going to pull it all the way down using that tension with the comb and the fingers. <laughs> Then I'm just going to trim that section to line up with the rest of the sections. And then I'll go ahead and follow that guideline for the rest of the section. Just that straight cut. And as you can see, it's really thin and scraggly at those ends there. That's when you can see as well what needs to go. Because you want it to be more dense. And when you can see those sparse areas at the ends of your hair, that's when you know that you need a trim. And also with my older haircuts I used to do point cut in and all this stuff to try not get choppy layers. I hate it and I used to get choppy layers in my hair. So with curly hair you won't notice any mistakes too much but it's when you wear your hair straight that you're going to see any mistakes that you might have made. But um, because my layers are so small you literally don't see any choppiness at all and that's what I like about doing my layers low. And then I'll do exactly the same thing on that side. So I'm parting off half of the back section just because my hair is thick and I don't want to get confused. And I want it to be easier to manage as well. So I'm just taking half of that section and I'm going to use the guideline from that back section to cut the front section. So that's what I'm doing here. Using the tension and my two fingers and I'm pulling all the way down to get that straight cut across. Just like so. Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> and I'm just checking it over and over again. I do check it about two or three times, as I said, and just trim whatever looks odd. And I don't cut into the bottom layers. So, literally, any hair that is coming away from that guideline, that's what I cut. So I'm just parting off those front layers again now that I have the guy line that I need. I put one side up and I'm going to work on the left side first. So I'm working on the left side again and I'm splitting this section into two sections. And I'm taking that first section and I'm lining it up using that 45 degree angle. You want to use the same angle because that's how you're going to know how much to cut off. Right? So. If it's horizontal, it's horizontal. If it's 45 degrees, it's 45 degrees. For the front section, I'm doing exactly the same thing. So I'll bring that all the way down, tension, two fingers, and just snip that excess hair that's coming away from that guided cut. And remember not to cut into the guideline. Also, what I do is I take the back section away. So I go ahead and bring the whole section together and check the layering there as well. So I'll bring it straight down, 45 degree angle, tension with the fingers and the comb, just a little bit there in the middle that just needs to be cut in that section. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll repeat the same process on the other side of my hair. My hair is finished at the front and more so at the hairline. So you won't see that density at the front of my hair, but um, I'm gonna do face framing layers at the front anyway after this. I'm just gonna have to apologize for some of the video not being in frame yeah I was a bit conscious of my body <laughs> because my boobies are humongous at the moment I'm breastfeeding so I'm a bit conscious of them but yeah I do try to bring the scissors up in frame before I cut I 
I don't use regular scissors in my hair just because I need them to be as sharp as possible. So don't use your household scissors, your, your kitchen scissors, your paper craft scissors. Don't use any scissors that are blunt. If you cut your hair with blunt scissors, you're going to cause more splitting to occur. So now I'm just checking to see if the lengths are the same on each side. Again, taking random sections of hair. Happy with that. So now I'm moving on to do the face framing layers, just so that I can have some sort of face framing bang action going on. So what I do, I'll part about two inches from the part in and make a part in down towards my air. So it looks like a big section of hair, but it's not that much because my hairline is quite thin. So if you don't have a hairline like mine, just do an inch and a half maybe, and then pin the rest of your hair back. I was having some dry flakes and I just washed my hair, so I don't know what that's about. That literally don't usually happen to me. And it would be when I'm recording. But anyway, so my memory card got full. I literally didn't see it stop recording. I was recording for five hours straight. So my memory cards got really full. So yeah, you've got your face framing layers. With these layers, they can literally be as short as you like. So if you want to cut really short bangs down to your chin sort of bang action going on, you can do that. I used to do that quite often. But um, with my curly hair, I just like to keep everything quite long. Because as you know, the shrinkage is real. Yeah, so I'm just cutting off what needs to be cut off. So with that front section done, I go ahead and take the side section now and I make a diagonal cut. That's all I do. Because my hair isn't that thick at the front, I don't need to really worry about how dense the cut is gonna look. Those front bits are really sparse. I really should have cut off a little bit more, but I'm cutting off a good amount here as it is. That's about three inches there, but it's really thin, really thin. And I think that's from when I had postpartum hair fall. It literally came out from the front of my hair and my hair literally has come a long way from a year ago from where it all dropped out at the front. It's a problem I no longer have, but um, that's also why my hairline is quite sparse. Cause my baby did it, my baby did it. So once I'm done cutting those face framing bangs, I go ahead and just see if it's all seamless. Cause usually the diagonal cut will leave it with some blunt ends. So I just round that out basically. I go ahead and separate the sections to left and right again. And then I comb it together with that front section of hair again. And I'm gonna trim the hair so that the face framing layers can match up with the layers in that section. So yeah, I just comb it out, Pull it down with the tension with the fingers and the comb and I just round it out because I don't want it to look like a right angle. I mean don't rush this guys, literally don't rush, just take your time, don't go in and cut big chunks in your hair either because I've done that in the past where I've started off by cutting too much and I had to even out the rest of my hair so that's definitely something you don't want to be doing. Alright, so what I'm doing here is a bit tricky and I wouldn't really recommend doing it because you can make huge mistakes <laughs> doing this, but it just gives the face framing layers a little bit more of a feathered look. So I just take the scissors and do little, little, little cuts going down while I'm pulling down. And another thing, if you mess up, do not try to rectify the mistake because that's when you will end up cutting more hair than you would want to. This happened to me before. I literally cut off like two, three inches because I was trying over and over again to rectify the mistake that I'd done on my haircut. Literally, if you want to try and make it look a little less disastrous, then go ahead and do that. But don't just continue cutting, cutting, cutting away to try and correct the mistake you made. And for the other side, how I achieve that is I'll comb it out and I'll leave the comb where I want to cut it and then twist the comb around and just try and feather it the other way. It's a bit difficult to explain, but you see what I mean in the video. Just because I don't have a very good angle to get the feathered cut, if you get what I mean. It's a bit tricky doing it the other way, basically. <laughs> and I'm not going heavy with the scissors, it's just literally like 
a light, light, light cut. I'm not cutting hard, I'm just doing light little flickering going down. And now I'm just checking to see if everything's even, bringing all that hair together. Yep, everything seems all good. And I'll just comb it through over and over again just to make sure that I have cut it evenly. So, that's that, all done. I probably could have cut off a little bit more just to get rid of those trashy, trashy ends. So I probably will have to cut it again maybe in three months time. So I won't have to cut off so much next time. It'll just be like a little trim. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this meat now. Um, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, that's how I trim my hair guys. I did repeat the process on my straight hair after I straightened my hair. So I will probably upload how I trimmed my hair on my straight hair as well. Just for those who cut their hair while their hair is straightened. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if you cut your own hair yourself and how you go about doing that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. The next video should be on how I maintain my straight hair for four weeks. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.